Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Esoteric Atlanta. We're doing something a little bit different today because I know it's a very stressful time for a lot of people. It's been a very stressful time for a few years now, and we are getting to the precipice of change in our world. And so we wanted to take some time just to have some fun even though this is being released in the morning, it's kind of like a campfire get together. As we move into the age of Aquarius, into a new timeline, I personally believe that the veil will be thinner and we will start to understand multi-dimensional beings, whether that be ghosts, aliens, whatever, on a deeper level. I also believe that most of us have had very interesting experiences in our life and we don't understand that we're not in the minority with those experiences until we start talking to other people. And we realize we're not crazy. We have actually had something that can't be explained by modern science. So today I have with me our awesome guy friends from Mystery Archives. Most of you guys are familiar with their channel, Hello. Cody and Brett. Howdy. We got Christy from Truth Seeking with Christy, and we've got the TikTok queen herself, Elizabeth, who took took one for the team a, a week ago about and took that arrow in that battlefield, and she has her new account up now, guys, so please go and make sure you follow her. I'm also going to put a link to her Etsy shop down in the description box below. She's got awesome t-shirts that are really really cool we always want to support our fellow fellow people out there so i was about to say the p word but apparently the p word you can't say anymore so i won't say that word so all right so let's start i'm gonna actually start this with cody because of his channel mystery archives and then we'll move around the circle and tell our stories is that cool cody yeah that's totally fine absolutely take it all away right. boy oh okay well um <laughs> I, I wasn't ready, apparently. Um, I've, I've had a, a couple of different experiences. I've lived in two different haunted houses um, over the course of my life. I, I think it would be better to go into essentially this uh, place that I lived. It was in a small town called Sedgwick. It was a hundred-year-old farmhouse. I lived there with my mom, my aunt, I uh, two siblings, and my uncle. And... Uh, Basically, most of the activity started after my grandmother passed away, and it just slowly started to escalate. And I, I'm pretty sure that it wasn't my grandmother herself that was causing the haunting, but more or less, maybe her passing just kicked things off a little bit more. Um, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but essentially, after she passed, we started to experience different knocking noises within the home itself. Um uh, one thing that began to happen was the doorbell and, and us thinking it was a small town. Uh, you know, we kids would go out and ding dong ditch and, and do that sort of thing to pass time. <laughs> Cause what else are you going to do in a small town? Right. Um, but my uncle actually disconnected you, the doorbell. Sorry, will you explain oh, sorry, ding dong <laughs> ditch just in case I know we have people sure, from, other sure. countries, from other countries watching. Um, I know all of us Americans play ding dong ditch, but just in case people from other countries <laughs> don't know what that is, will you explain that quickly? Sure. So uh, ding dong ditching is where a bunch of bored kids get together and they go up to someone's house and they ring their doorbell sporadically at all hours of the night and then run away. So when someone answers the door, you know, they're like, oh, my gosh, no one's there. So I don't know. I used to do it. <laughs> I'm sure many of us used to do it back in the day. So it's a small town thing. Um, us small town kids did for, for entertainment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that and cow yeah, tipping. Cow tipping. Yeah, cow, I never, I never did cow tipping actually. <laughs> I was in, I was in that same territory though. So. <laughs> The glory days. <laughs> yes. All right, so for those who don't know, that's what. So that's a logical explanation. You live in a small town. You think it's just ding dong ditch, right? But then your uncle. Yeah. Well, that. Doorbell. Yeah. So my uncle actually disconnected the doorbell, and uh, it continued to go off. Um, usually around three a.m. in the morning, which was really bizarre, and a lot of different things began to happen around that time which, you know, a lot of people refer to it as the witching hour. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, long story short, af after the doorbell started to happen, we uh, started to experience some really odd knocking noises. I think I mentioned that previously. But uh, down, down in the basement, um, because it was an old farmhouse that had been 
um, essentially remodeled over the years. There was an old slaughter shower in the basement. That's actually where we used to shower was they essentially took out the original spigot that was down there and replaced it with a shower head. I'm trying to paint as best the pictures like, but basically there was an old slaughter shower downstairs. And then towards the tail end of the basement, there was an old cannery that my uncle's family used. And a lot of the activity seemed to be centered on and around this basement area in particular. And uh, there was one night um, me and my brother actually built, um, cause we used to sleep down there most of the time. We didn't have our rooms at the time. So we would, you know, us being kids, we'd build like blanket forts and that sort of thing. And uh, we had built a blanket fort. And uh, I woke up in the middle of the night after we had fallen asleep, we were watching a movie or something in there. Just kids being kids. And my brother was gone. So I was like, hmm, that's kind of weird. And I looked over towards the tail end of the basement where this cannery is. Essentially. It's, it always seemed to be darker back there. Anyway. And I started seeing the blankets. Actually, like someone was behind them, essentially smacking them down, coming towards me. And I panicked, ran out of the fort and uh, went upstairs, found my brother and essentially was like, why did you leave me there? <laughs> and uh, he was he was like four or five at the time. And uh, he, he actually said he heard knocking noises towards the back of the room. And that's what woke him up. And he started getting scared. So that that was one of the first major events, I would say, that I experienced and from there, I mean, it just continued to escalate. Like, um, and uh, along with the doorbell ring, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to jam all these stories into one. <laughs> I was a little unprepared today, so bear with me. When you grow up um, in a haunted house, you could probably do a five-hour <laughs> episode. <laughs> so I, yeah, I so I'm like, oh, well, I'm I'm getting my coffee in me. I'm still on the, <laughs> you know, I'm still working on waking up, uh, trying to remember everything for one, and then condense it all into a few minute time span so everyone else can explain their stories too. <laughs> um, but in, in that same basement, essentially, after that happened, not, not too um, long after that happened, I think it was a couple months at most. Um, sorry, my dog's in the uh, tripod here. That's okay. <laughs> um, basically, when, when we would uh, take showers, because we had to use that old slaughter shower, right? Um, me and my brother and sister, we would essentially uh, watch each other's backs sort of a thing because like we'd get real creeped out down there you know and uh you know one of us would be in the shower the other would be outside the door and we would essentially just talk to one another so we wouldn't get super scared or creeped out and uh there was one night in particular my my sister was taking a shower i'm chilling outside the door we're just kind of bantering back and forth trying to pass the time and the lights went out and, you know, that's that's going to raise alarm bells regardless, right? And uh, so she starts panicking. I, I'm panicking on the inside, but I don't, You're the you know, one I'm the trying shower? to keep it together for, no, 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 I, uh, my sister was in the shower. I'm, okay, I'm so outside the like, door. You're like, I can go, I'm dressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm sitting there like, you know, I don't know what to do. She's She's starting to freak out and I'm trying to keep it together, you know, for her sake, essentially. You know, I'm trying to be like the the tough older brother sort of a, a character, and uh, we started hearing this um, this grunting noise coming from like inside of the wall, which down down in the basement, I'm pretty sure, and I, I haven't been back since, but I'm more than sure that it was essentially concrete down there. So it's not like there could be an animal or yeah. something like that living within the wall. Yeah. So it's. It was one of those things where we're hearing the doorbell ringing upstairs. There is a almost like a snarling sound coming from inside of this concrete wall. It's pitch black down there. So <laughs> next thing I know, my, my sister is panicking, screaming behind me. You know, she's grabbing on to my shirt, trying to get me to go upstairs. I'm trying to get us upstairs, but I can't see what's going on. And, uh, that that was one of the I would argue that's uh, top top five most scared I've probably ever been, um, but yeah, I hope I hope that about sums it up. 
<laughs> well, you talked about your grandmother passing away and what we've learned about like energy and like portals. Like we were just talking about portals before we started filming is that the energy you, if you have a collective group experiencing the same emotion, especially when it's sorrow or something heavy, it can open up and right. recycle. And if that was like a, I you know I was thinking about Cody. I was like, if you have kids one day, you're going to be able to go and tell them about your childhood and be like, at least you don't have to shower in a small shower. <laughs> Yeah. I had to walk yeah. school barefoot, uphill both ways. Yes. You know? Uphill both ways, no <laughs> shoes. <laughs> slaughter shower. So. Yes. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was uh it, it was quite the terrifying place to grow up, I would argue. And I know I'm like laughing and explaining it now in hindsight. It's like you know, I'm much more open and relaxed to being able to explain it. But at the time when I was going through it, it, it was pretty horrible. Oh, I, I, yeah. we, I think we all giggle because I think especially, I mean, we talked about this and Elizabeth and I are both in the South. You guys are in the Midwest. Christy's in Pennsylvania. Yep. So we're both, we're all in areas that have a lot of folklore when it comes to hauntings. And sure. it's real. And, and when you are, I mean, I remember we had a basement and I would like, when I would come upstairs from the basement, I would like turn the light off and like bolt up the stairs. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, there's a, you have that panicky feeling. It's, it's real. And especially when you're young, I think that spirits know that you can, you can sense them. You haven't shut off that off yet. So, you know, so you haven't been back to the no, house I, yet. Would you go back if someone lets you? <laughs> So uh, it's funny you mentioned that because I've, I've talked to my brother, I've talked to Brett a little bit about it as well, that I definitely would be interested in going back because as far as I know, my uncle still lives there. Well, like ex-uncle now, my aunt and uncle are divorced, but I still like consider him my uncle. I haven't seen him in years, but he still lives there apparently. Um, there's a bunch of our uh, childhood boys and stuff that are still there in that basement. Um and I, I would like the opportunity to go back. I would definitely film it and maybe do some say. preemptive, yeah. some preemptive uh, cleansing. cleansing. <laughs> yeah, some preemptive uh, protective measures. But uh, I, I would definitely, if, if the opportunity presented itself, I would definitely go back. You could totally go and film it, spend the night, and see if you can pick anything. Bring a windows eye. Dude, <laughs> I don't know if I would spend the night. I mean, I'm I'm brave, but I don't know if I'm that. <laughs> Get <laughs> Okay, what is this ghost adventure? <laughs> right. So Elizabeth and Christy, Brett, Brett and Cody are cousins. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I'm not, Sorry. Brett go with you. I'm not like setting them up. They're actually cousins. But Brett, would you go with yeah. them? Remember that house, Brett, that he lived in? Yes, if I if I uh, properly prepared myself first, like I would not be going in there without at least having a rosary and um, you know cleansing myself before and afterwards. Like I I guarantee by the time I would get back to my house, I would be doing you know my whole banishing process and just freaking cleaning myself. I'll just take like I just like take a bunch of like a huge bottle of like sage essential oil and dump it on myself or something. <laughs> what, what if we up the ante and dared you to get a Ouija board to take into that basement? Gosh. Oh dude. Oh, no, uh, I don't, I'm I don't good. mess with Ouija boards, no, man. We talked about that like... last time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do not mess with the Ouija boards. No, man. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> the driver special is that we take a Ouija board into that basement. <laughs> Hey, dude, if you if you mess with the Ouija board and I can just chill back and film and uh, experience <laughs> the stuff that's flying around the room, then uh, be my guest. <laughs> uh, Cody's going to set up a little protective circle of sage, sit in the middle of the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'll be, I'll just pour a circle of salt around, just around me. Sorry, Brett. You can just chill out there with the Ouija yeah, board. I'm going to hang out outside the circle like a moron. I feel like, remember, you was brave. You can stay out there. I, I feel like it would just pick him up and he'd be like, oh, like flying around the room. I'm like, yeah, that's right. You're just yeah. sitting there and be like, I'm not leaving the circle. I'm not leaving the circle. <laughs> <laughs> the circle of safety. I'm not leaving. I'd be like, I guess I I guess I live here now. <laughs> As you're pouring more salt on you, like <laughs> Dude, all of the salt. <laughs> yeah. So did the adults in, in 
in the house at the time experience anything too? Did they, besides the doorbell, and did they ever experience anything that they said? Or do you think they experienced it, but didn't say anything? Did they want to scare you? Like, what, what is your take on that? So, um, well, there were three adults that lived there. You know, my aunt, my uncle, and my mom. My uncle, um, I never really got to know him super well. And he worked all the time. So it didn't seem like he had had any sort of experiences within the house. Um, I know my aunt had several experiences within the house and she was always very spiritual in that sense. Mm -hmm. So she, she believed us through and through um, or believed me rather, as far as like what I was seeing and experiencing and whatnot. But she actually, so my, uh, I'm not going in chronological order as much as I would love to right now. It's just hard to condense it all. Um, my uncle's father actually passed away of brain cancer in the house as well. Um, quite a long time before any of us ended up living there. And my aunt actually said that he came to her when she was sleeping in their bedroom, which was upstairs in the house. Um, it was a two story house. So, uh, basically she said she heard, she woke up and she was in like sort of a twilight state, And she heard a knocking at her window, which we're talking, this is like 20 plus feet off the ground. And she opened up the window and it was uh, my uncle Bill's father. I I forget his name, but he was there and he essentially just floated into the room and proceeded to talk to her for, she said, what seemed like hours and, uh, and then ended up leaving. So she, she said she was very much awake and alert. (laughs) Well, (laughs) He, he was definitely gone. <laughs> um, I'd be like, put it, because you know that like, you see that like, floating out through the window. I'd be like, putting my finger through him, like, are you? Like, are you <laughs> or, or just shut the window and just <laughs> wave goodbye. <laughs> like, I really need to stop eating sweets before bed. Like, <laughs> that's great. So, um, but that that was one of the things she experienced in the house, and that that nice? always uh, stuck with her. Yeah, he was nice. Um, she tried to ask him different questions about the afterlife and that sort of a thing, and uh, I never got a lot of info out of her about that. I'm sure if I talked to her now, uh, I'm I would imagine she would remember. Well, be she able wants to, share to come that on the with channel. Us, we can bring her on too. <laughs> for uh, I don't know. She's kind of crazy. <laughs> I say that today. with love. I'm sure Brett knows. <laughs> uh, but you know, yeah. I, mean, I mean, all cancer is painful. But if her brain cancer is extremely painful, especially at the that's end, what I hear. And he and he was gone like pretty fast. I mean, I yeah. I never met him, but I I actually saw him. Um, never having met the guy when he was alive i i saw him um i believe it was i had lived there for about a year we lived there for about two to three years total and uh i actually was going the way that it was situated was their room was over here upstairs and there was a hallway and the bathroom was here and there was a set of stairs that led up and to the right was your bathroom so i was actually headed to the restroom one night and uh, I saw this bluish translucent figure dart from the bedroom, which is actually where he passed away. And I didn't know that at the time, to the bathroom, like just ran at a dead run. And it scared me so bad that I fell down the stairs and I, I ran out of the house. I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going back in there. I was like nine or 10 at the time. And uh, turns out it, it was my uncle's dad because they showed me a family portrait and they were like, was it, you know, like, was it any of these people? And I was like, yeah, it was this guy. Like he, he was like a bluish white color, but I could clearly tell he had like overalls on. He was a, a bigger, heavier set guy. And uh, turns out that was him. But when he passed away in the room from the brain cancer, he was actually like less than a hundred pounds. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, it's uh, interesting there, like- all around. They go from what I understand, like the 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 image of them will come back when they were like their happiest or their healthiest. Sometimes, so if you saw them as bigger, yeah, well, so definitely yeah. would have been healthy for sure. <clears throat> yes, <laughs> well, eating the real good. The south are like that, <laughs> being, you know. Yeah, sturdy. Um, but that I, I did a story <laughs> on the the Cokeville Ville miracles a few weeks ago that where they were rescued. These kids were rescued. 
um, some, I'm have to be careful about what I say on YouTube, but these people came in, this was in like the eighties and this guy came into a school, very small school to, you know, do this. Y'all know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. And I think I've heard, I think I've heard this story. Yeah. It's pretty, these, this was none of that, none of that had happened before. Like this was, you know, none of that had ever happened before. And the kids were on a room and he had this device that was supposed to go boom. If you know what I'm saying? Because of censorship. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the kids said all the kids, they were little elementary school before they were rescued. They saw all these people come into the room. And they would, each kid had a story of like this, these beautiful women or men would come up to them by their name and tell them like, go stand by the window. Or after the thing went off, they, one girl mm -hmm. remembers the lady holding her hand and running out with her. And some of them mm -hmm. called them angels, but afterwards they would look at pictures of loved ones who had already passed away and they would point to the person that, that they didn't know who these people were. I mean, yeah, I, when I was so crazy. Friends, it's so crazy. And these were like little kids that wouldn't know to make something up. And they all, you know, after the fact is when they all started talking about it when they were still at home and not back at school. So they hadn't had time. I mean, this was the 80s. It wasn't like they were texting each other, you know, they were little anyway. Yeah. So they were just telling their parents like what had happened in this tragedy. And no one, the only people that were, that lost their lives were the, the, the two culprits. Nobody yeah. else did during this event. So it was pretty. Wasn't it a husband and a wife? Mm -hmm. If I'm remembering the right. Yeah. yeah. Husband and wife. Yeah. So I, I you know, kids see these things. And mm -hmm. um, so anyway, but um, all right. So that's awesome. If you get your aunt to come on this show, I will give her a Dude. platform. <laughs> Dude, I, I will try or at, or at a minimum, I can see maybe if she'd be willing to sit down and talk about it and i could forward the footage or something that would like that. be awesome but, i love people that I, yeah. I, we see what do we say down here in the south elizabeth we we honor our crazy we put them on the front porch oh. and give them sweet tea yeah. we don't hide our sweet crazy, tea. Tea. <laughs> we, don't hide our crazy tea. we don't hide them we honor them <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> all right who wants to go now we're gonna either go elizabeth or christy who wants to go next don't matter I'll go. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I mean, I think I, I told Bryce this at one point, but I, uh, I kind of have always been on the crazy spiritual spectrum just because my first word when I was a child was angel. Like, I would point and go, angel, angel. Like, I have it on video. Um, it's like family videos of me just running around pointing out angels. Um, That's wild. But <laughs> crazy is, like, that never really went away. So, like, I have always essentially been able to see things that, like, most people can't see, which is, hmm. I don't talk about it because you know, people think you're crazy, but I mean, you guys are talking about like the people that have died. Um, there's this teacher that I used to listen to. He, uh, he calls them essentially like, you know, like in a religious term, it's kind of like the cloud of witnesses or like your elders, essentially like the people in your past that have passed on, um, that surround you and help you live out your mission essentially. Um, and right. so, literally I used to be able to sense when people died. I remember when I was 16, the first time I went to LA, one of my best friends uh, back home, um, I was in the ocean and I just had this sense, like someone just left, someone just left, someone important to me. And I was like, I like had the thought of like, I wonder what would happen if I died too right now. It was super weird, like intrusive thought. Mm -hmm. Then I come to find mm -hmm. out that my best friend hung himself um and then i started to see him everywhere it was crazy absolutely crazy um ruined my first trip to la but it was uh, i I, sure. I can imagine <laughs> so just things like that um i had the same kind of feeling when my great-grandmother died um even when my cat died i like could see them in a way it's kind of like a holographic type of seeing um but it's something that like uh like you said um you were you pointed out the guy in a picture so i've mm -hmm. i've been able to like see people around other people and be, and it, describe them to them and one time i <laughs> described my friend's dad who had died when she was a baby um and she was like that's oh dad. wow i was like oh 
Sorry. I <laughs> well, he's there. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, so it's definitely something that like, it's really cool because something that I have like innately grown up with is like now coming to the forefront and the surface. And like so many people are like speaking out about it now. Um, I don't really have like haunted stories because I was never really scared of it for some reason. And if I hmm. was, I'd just be like, "Go away!" You know, just tell to, to leave. Like if I didn't like it. Um, I mean, were were your experiences typically like inherently negative, or did you ever feel scared by so, them per se? Yeah, yeah. When my um, when my like uh, when I was younger and my parents lived together, like before they got divorced and they were fighting all the time, I would have crazy nightmares um, and see things come into my room. Like, you know, I probably called them monsters or something like that to because I was I was five or six by the time my parents got divorced. Um, so that kind of scared me. And I actually was just like, I don't want to see it anymore. I remember saying that out loud. Uh, and then I kind of stopped seeing stuff for like a few years. Then I went to this camp that was like with my church. Um and <laughs> yeah <laughs> and someone was like i feel like someone like has shut off their like ability to see you know kind of thing um and they want it back and i was like me <laughs> you know kind of thing so <laughs> i uh, basically someone prayed for me and then i was like literally able to see again um just as i had before and i was hmm. scared of it this time hmm. but when my parents were fighting so bad uh I definitely was was terrified of it, but I was much younger, so I didn't understand. So it was like a span of maybe like five, six years that I didn't see anything because I literally like turned it off. Um, but makes I sense. Grew up a little bit, and then I was like, "Wait, that actually was a gift. I should, I want it back." Yeah, you know? open back up to it. Yeah. yeah. So I think because I was ready to have it back, essentially, like you know, it happened. And then I would have things like I told you with my friends dying or people that were close to me die. Um, I essentially see them or I can see them if I want to, you know, and people around other people. It's kind of crazy. And I was watching a, uh, a Netflix TV show where like the kid's dad died. This was a few years ago. And the, he said a perfect quote that like explained it. He was like, energy never dies. It just changes form. And I was like, yep. that's it. That's it. That's all it is. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. it. It was a very like um, quantum kind of show. And I was like, very like meta describing <laughs> that I've been questioning. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've, I'm trying to like pinpoint like a good story, but that's, it's very much been a, I've always been the quiet, hyper spiritual person. Uh, because and that's I feel like that's also how I ended up essentially being a part of the truth community is because uh, <laughs> you see so many things <laughs> you're just like mm, that doesn't look right uh, I <laughs> um, so I feel like that's how because I get questions all the time they're like you're so young like you're so awake and so young I'm like well the thing is I've been like this for a while <laughs> I've been, like, I've been through a lot. Out, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't really pay it to anything other than I just was born like this. <laughs> um, Fair enough. <laughs> you know, part right of this, what's happening right now is they're trying to, di to almost divide us because as we start, to, as we're saying, we move into this new age and the veil gets thinner and some of our, our DNA starts to slowly activate more when we can see things, it deepens our connection to God. Right. And they don't want that. And right. so that's why we can't yeah. say that word, but the cure yeah. is actually cutting off our connection. They're trying to dull that down and, and make us look like, yeah. Everything that they've been doing for the last at least 50 years or more has been just to completely distract us. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about it, all the entertainment that we have today, like we never have times to just sit and think or even like have a minute to maybe even like sense what's around us mm -hmm. because so it's all constant distraction. Yeah, exactly. Continuously distraction. Uh, you're not distracted by work. You come home and you veg out and you eat. You're not, you know, 
watching the television, you're looking at something on your phone, you know, you're yeah. playing a video game, you're doing something constantly. There's no like, uh, always sitting. There's no, re no respite <laughs> yeah. to just sit and focus on anything you could be potentially wanting to improve upon or wanting to yeah. learn about yourself. It's always constant distraction. Yeah. But, um, yeah, with, uh, it's, it's kind of, interesting because i got to this place where you know like you were saying of the whole like um running from the dark kind of thing i used to be terrified of the dark but mm -hmm. i kind of like stepped in by, to my own power at one point and was like trying to like ramp up my abilities and i would purposefully stand in a dark creepy place for as long as i could <laughs> and just could withstand like, it <laughs> yeah just like feel what i could feel see what i could see and i would just like ha and i i would seriously see things that like you could really not describe other than like demonic things like evil entities mm -hmm come up like this close to my face and I would just kind yeah. of look at them like they were stupid. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bye. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> that all you got? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is one of those things it's like, you know, obviously as a kid we're terrified of all these things because we have no like words to describe them, knowledge, whatever. But I feel like once you like start growing into your own and your own power and whatnot, you're like, wait a second. And you're, nothing okay <laughs> like um, <laughs> when you're little too you don't have you don't have control so right. if you're in a house because I, I grew up in a haunted house too oh. you can't leave <laughs> yeah. your, your parents are like oh that's cute it's your imagination or whatever you, you're stuck and then that you're creates stuck. more anxiety because you can't yeah. do anything you I know will tell and, you that I also was the child that experienced um like my mom's home group and such doing exorcist on people and um oh wow it was a very weird child <laughs> y'all the hey, two uh, can, together. can relate to a certain degree with the weird childhood <laughs> like I, I never realized that like other people's childhood wasn't the same until i got a little bit older and moved away and i was like wait a second your mom didn't do that in your didn't do exorcism. <laughs> like, like you know or or just like we she would go into houses and like spirits should clean them like that's what my mom would do and i would go with her <laughs> it's just kind of like oh wait that's not normal like you don't do that <laughs> kind of wild she uh took you with her though because uh yeah. usually you would think i guess it really depends on how bad the infestation is or the activity is but yeah <laughs> Pretty, pretty brave to. I mean, I don't like have any experiences where I like remember anything really weird happening. I just remember like her going over to people's houses and praying and anointing the walls with oil. <laughs> she did it all, yeah. all the time. <laughs> you know, Fair enough. <laughs> all that kind of stuff, like praying over it and praying in tongues and, you know, all that kind of like super religious stuff. But it was just funny because I lit like you don't know that other people would do that till you actually like start to experience the world and so especially right. when I moved to LA and I lived there for a year I was like wait a second <laughs> okay. okay nothing about my childhood is normal got it I, I feel like you would need to like anoint yourself and whatever residence on the daily if you lived in LA because I feel like it would be a, a pretty <laughs> brutal place I lived in LA place. for a long time and I had I saw many demon I had I had a I saw the red eye demons Yep. I had one lick my yeah, face. Yeah, have you seen once. the lizard ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they licked my face once. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel, feel like they would happen. be everywhere. Yeah. Oh, they are. They, now we know. Like, now we're like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. they do there? That's special. Like, my landlord's crawling up the wall. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's she great. just grew two on her legs. <laughs> he might be concerned. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's like, I know I'm late on the rent, but like, damn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely an uh, uh, experience in itself. But honestly, like, I feel like compared to my childhood, I was slightly prepared for it. So <laughs> I, I did want to ask you this. When your parents were fighting all the time, did that escalate what you were experiencing at that time other than just yeah. the nightmares? Um. Yeah, I would see. I would like go. I... I would go into like my closet in my room and hide behind things. So I could not see things. Um, mm. And uh, cause I just felt, and I could see like the, 
evil stuff fighting pretty much like everyone i feel like this is a true thing of everyone that has certain things inside of them especially if they don't heal Mm -hmm. themselves um and it's like your demons fighting your demons come out (laughs) like so i would see that it makes sense um and I hated seeing that because you don't ever want to see anything like that with people that are like your parents that should be mm-hmm. safe. Right. Uh, so yeah. I think that probably my, my parents had a really nasty divorce too. And I feel like that, I mean, just that much negativity all the time on a daily basis definitely can attract, you know, certain, right. certain uh, demonic entities or yeah. otherworldly entities that want to feed upon. Yeah, and it's kind of like they they just kind of, uh, you know, they fight against each other, like, you know, and it just, they get bigger and bigger the more they you fight each other kind of yeah. thing. They, nothing yeah. like, that's why it's kind of like, if you're like a healed person and you come up with someone who just wants to fight you, if you just do nothing, they don't know what to do with it. Like, they want to fight because that's that thing in them. They, like, want to. So if you come at them with just, like, I'm not going to say anything then it just completely like puts puts it like cut, cuts off the energy almost yeah. well another way of thinking about it too is that it's kind of like how um think about how like a virus or a microorganism would want to reproduce like it wants to replicate itself and it wants to use you as that replicator you're the host it wants to so basically it's eating your energy to mm-hmm. make itself bigger so, I I'm mean, sorry. We, we, what, we what was it like, that you said the other day, Bryce? It was like we're the McDonald's. Oh yeah, we're the McDonald's of, uh, for demons. Yeah. <laughs> we're the McDonald's That's for demons. Like, they're like da 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 da. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> you can apply that analogy to a lot of what's going on in the world right now. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's because guys. Well, and it's it's so true because entities that live in the dark, the dark cannot produce itself. Only the light can. And so since the dark can't create, it has, it has to feed off of the light. Right. Like you can I, self-produce, you can self-heal, you can do these things. The darkness can't. And so it has to, it has to trigger these things or it will find, it's like a beacon in the night when it knows that there's a house with parents going through a divorce or there's a lot of emotion. It's like a beacon in the light for them. Like the big arches, the yellow arches are standing up. They're like, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> and so that, that's very true where the light doesn't have to the light doesn't need that but you know with narcissistic um a b u s e if you have a narcissist in your life they tell you the thing you do is just cut them off don't respond no matter what they say to you don't feed into it they'll eventually <laughs> go away and find somebody else because they're not feeding them they're dark sold as well so yeah. Well, what's funny is that if we talk about um, people being the fast food for demons, uh, uh, if someone's like one of these beings are preying upon a child, it brings a whole new meaning to calling it a kid's meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> ah. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, the kids are the easiest because the demons know the kids can't leave. Like we are saying, there's, they can't leave. They don't have the right to just leave, you know? They're also so, more susceptible. My mind went to an even darker place with that one, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, and the kid's light, the kid's light is brighter than ours. A child's light is always brighter than an adult. So therefore it's more delectable for them. So it's more pure. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Animals do. But I think animals can see everything. Any day Cody and I've talked about that. Animals are like, listen, mm-hmm. I see all this stuff. <laughs> so um, but I get, you know, Elizabeth, I've had a lot of that experience in my life. I've seen a lot of stuff in my life. I get scratched all the time. Like I'll wake up with huge scratch. I mean, the other day I woke up and I had scratch marks all over me and I was getting out of the shower and I, my boyfriend sees them. I was getting out of the shower so I didn't have a shirt on and he watched one just as a, a live action go down my back. But it was right oh, yeah. after I had started doing all these big interviews with these people in, in our community that are like movers and shakers. So it's like they're doing anything they can to stop what is inevitable. Even if it's like trying to smudging. Yeah. At this point, I'm just like, oh, look. <laughs> like, it's like a battle star. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll come out to him. My boyfriend, like, oh, look, I got attacked last night. Another one. <laughs> Another <laughs> one. I'll like pull my boobs up. I'm like, take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to our friends. 
show and tell. <laughs> so you know, we, can laugh tell. At we can laugh at the demon and be like, really? Well, how pathetic that is. <laughs> it's not the best. Well, well best I heard com comedy and humor is something well, they, they don't are. understand. We talked yeah. about it last time, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why the, uh, the deranged side of our world is trying to take away comedy. Yeah. You can't be funny anymore because it's yeah. they're trying to take it away. Yeah. You know, because that's comedy, laughter, laughter is literally the best medicine. But I'll tell, I was, you know, like I was saying, I had a, I've had a lot of really, really dark experiences. I've seen a lot of stuff, but I'm going to tell a positive one um, very quickly that my, uh, so my grandmother passed away, my mom's mom, I was really close to my mom's mom. She passed away when I was eight, about to turn nine years old. And my grandfather, my mom's dad had already, I was really young when he passed away. So I didn't quite understand what that meant. But when my grandmother passed away, it hit me really hard. It was like a big whammy. Like she was gone. And then all of a sudden I realized what mortality was. So it really scared me. And I didn't want my parents going anywhere. Like I, I was, I just, I, I was like literally going into a depression, but this was the, I has Christy and I are the oldest people on this on this episode right now. So back in the olden days, in the dark <laughs> ages, you, did, you didn't send your kids to a therapist. <laughs> you didn't send, nowadays, if you had a child that was really struggling with with a past, someone passing away, you'd probably send them to a therapist to talk about it so that they could understand what they were feeling. That didn't happen with us. We just had to just move on. Well, one night, my sister and I, our bedrooms were beside each other, and we always slept with the hall light on. Because I was scared of the dark, too. I saw a lot of stuff. I never wanted to be the dark. And our doors opened. Well, I was really upset about my grandmother passing. And somebody had turned the hall light off. So I was, like, extra freaked out because the lights were off. And I was just having this, like, eight-year-old mental breakdown. Like, didn't know what to do. And finally, I was like, I'm just going to go get in my sister's bed. And we would do that sometimes, just go get each other's beds. And so I went down the hall. And I got in my sister's bed. And so I get in the bed and I turn my, my back towards her, her door. And back in like the early 90s, it was really in vogue for kids' bedrooms to do sponge painting. Take a sponge and like block a room. <laughs> yeah. So in, in the dark, you kind of see little designs. So I was laying there in my sister's bed. She was asleep. And I was looking at her sponge painting. And I was thinking about my grandmother and how much I missed my grandmother. Well, all of a sudden, I... Over my shoulder, I'm watching the wall. I see this light start to come down the hall. And my first reaction was, oh, somebody's turning the hall light on. Like maybe when my parents is up and they forgot there. But then the light got so bright as it went down the hall that even with my back to the door, looking at the wall, I had to close my eyes because it was so bright and so intense. I couldn't even really give it justice about what it looked like. It goes down the hall. And then I hear my dad run down the hall after it. Then he, I hear him go back. Well, I didn't say anything. I stayed in the bed. I stayed asleep. I didn't know what had happened. The next day I was in my bedroom playing and we had a phone in the hallway because again, this was the dark ages when we had <laughs> landlines. <laughs> no cell phones hey, yet. I remember like, landlines. I'm not that, that young, all right? <laughs> um, and my mother was sitting in the hallway chit-chatting with one of her friends. We had no, you know, back in the day when the phone would ring and you had no idea who was calling you. It was just a surprise every time. You know? yeah. Change your voice. Yeah. Uh, who's this? No caller <laughs> <ID. laughs> so My mom was like out in the hallway like chit-chatting with one of her friends and I was in my room playing. And I hear my mom telling her friend this story. And that she said, you know, a few nights ago, I was in my bedroom with Lee, who was my dad. They were married. They're now divorced. We were married at the time. And my mom was like, I was just in the room crying. Just so upset. It's okay. We all have dogs. So upset that. Um, my my dog actually just pushed, right. pushed me back towards the wall, by the way. <laughs> like, that wasn't a ghost. That was my dog. <laughs> yeah. Well, I noticed you couldn't really see her on the camera. So it looks like I'm just like petting my own leg. <laughs> Do you have a needy dog too? <laughs> yes, Mine's very needy. Back in the room, but me too. I usually have a needy kid with you. I know she's got a beautiful child. That's on the show sometimes, but but anyway, I'm, I'm playing in my bedroom and I hear my mom chit chatting and she's telling her friend like how she was so upset. She was crying about her mom passing away and how both of her parents are gone now. And she was like younger than me at the time. She was in her early 30s. And so now I realize I was really young to have lost her parents. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. She had two kids, you know, and, and, um, and she said, all of a sudden, my mom said, all of a sudden we're laying in the bed and I'm upset. And this bright light appeared at our door and just stood there for a minute. This huge light. 
And then the light turned and went down the hall. And then she said, and then we, who was my dad, got up and chased the light to see what it was. And when he got to the end of the hall, it was gone. And she was saying, I think that was my mom. And I had seen that light too. And I ran out of the hallway and I told my mom and I said, I saw it too. I was like, mom, I was, I was in Mary Becca's room, my sister's room. And I saw the light like two, my back was to the, the door, but I saw it. And so that was, to, I, you know, it, looking back at that, it's like, it happened right after we had lost my grandmother. And it just was so out of all the crap we've been through with like demonic stuff. It just, it, it really gives me hope that there is a beautiful life after, after this, you know? And so right. anyway, I wasn't planning on sharing that, but I thought I would because. No, that's really interesting for sure. It yeah. makes one hope that that would be the case. <laughs> or it was <laughs> an angel. There's something yeah, yeah. that either it was something positive or it uh, stands as a testament that maybe there is a, a better life for us waiting after mm -hmm. one is done. We can only yeah. hope. Yeah. Yep. We can, only, or at least all of this is for nothing. <laughs> um, or it's all for nothing. And then, I mean, what's the point? <laughs> you know? Yeah. If it's all for nothing, I mean, yeah. Like, why don't we just go now? Like, that's kind of my point. Yeah. Like, why are we here? <laughs> oh, we, I think we know. I think, I think a lot of us have been prepared because we're in such an important crossing over anyway, globally. And um, from what I understand, from my, my boyfriend follows the law of one that, this time that we're in right now, like spirits and souls, we, we won the lottery. Like there were souls that were begging to come to earth at this time to experience what we we're experiencing. And we won the lottery because we're here. So, um, and J Jason Q says that a lot too, that we are actually, we're almost like the chosen, the lucky ones. We were chosen to be here at this time. So I think that's why a lot of us have had a lot of paranormal experiences because we're the chosen. No. The chosen ones. The chosen ones. <laughs> chosen one. Um, no, we're the we're special. No. <laughs> we're telling that to all the extraterrestrial life form that we're special. They're like, listen, you guys are our our reality TV. <laughs> you know, right. You ain't special. We get our popcorn out and watch y'all. <laughs> so that's great. All right, Brett, you go. <laughs> All right. So oh. with, my, with my paranormal experiences, um, I haven't had any that have been super crazy, like what Cody has experienced in his past. I mean, I've been to some of his other houses because he's been in a few different haunted houses. I mean, um, there was the one house to where it was kind of in a different town to where he had experienced like a variety of stuff in the basement. But with my kind of paranormal experiences, most of the houses that I've been in have at least had at least one or two, you know, so, you know, some kind of spirit or being in them. And the way I can usually tell is, and I just kind of learned to gauge it this way, especially when I was a little kid, if I would just get really creeped out, right? And it wouldn't go away. I wouldn't have to think about it. Like I would just, there are certain areas of the house that I would want to avoid. They just give me bad feeling. It's bad juju basically. Uh, but uh, I remember it was one of the first houses that my family lived in. Um, I kind of, I had slept in two different sections of the house. Uh, the first one I had kind of slept with my siblings and um, I slept on the top bunk of a, a bunk bed with my sister and my brother slept on the bottom bunk. And there's this sort of long hallway, just kind of straight, like up my feet are basically at the foot of the bed and the hallway is just straight down. Well, the, the bathroom, there's a bathroom just right to the left. There's basically a st set of stairs just to your right, but right in front of those stairs was a bathroom. That bathroom always was so creepy to me. I would never want to be standing directly in front of it. I would want to pass it as quickly as possible. And that, that's going to come in later, but that's not the only, that's not the only creepy experience I've had in that, that house. But that um, bathroom was creepy. I, but, I remember. <laughs> but what I will say it was very creepy. I remember there was one night, um, and I mean, my, uh, my brother and sister were really bad about doing this sort of thing. We would end up watching uh, horror movies. And I mean, I'm a little kid. I don't get to choose what me and my family watch. So we would end up watching something like Nightmare on Elm Street, and I'm sitting there trying to sleep, and my siblings would basically be doing the one, two, Freddy's coming for you. Um, the scene that, to that to mess with me, right? They're doing that to yeah. make me scared. Siblings are great, so, aren't they? <laughs> 
Yeah. So oh man, man they you were know, brutal. I'm surprised when I have trouble sleeping. You know, I have trouble sleeping because I'm afraid I'm gonna die. <laughs> but um, I remember I got up. It was in the middle of the night, uh, and I'm I'm a little kid. I'm probably like maybe I want to say I'm maybe four. You know, really young. But I get up and I run up the stairs uh, and I go, you know, kind of around the corner, go up another flight of stairs. Cause there's like, you know, there's a second story, but I go up to my uh, parents' bedroom and, you know, they were asleep and I was hoping they would let me, you know, lay down with them and say, cause I was scared, but they were kind of sick of my bull crap because I would move around a lot and kick in my sleep. So they're just like, no, you can go back to sleep with your, you can go back to sleep in your bed. So I'm walking downstairs and I'm kind of standing at the top of the uh, staircase going down and there's the bathroom just right there at the base of the um, stairs. Well, there's a little, um, the light was on right there and uh, there was a wall outlet just to the left of the bathroom. And it had one of those like really old like gel air fresheners on it, something like that. But I remember this to this day. It did not look like an air freshener that night. It looked like a demon face going like, Something like that. Oh, God. I've never forgotten about it. I've never forgotten it because it freaked me out <laughs> so much. But um, that was one creepy experience in that house. Um, the other the other sort of really creepy experiences I had in that house, um, I heard my name called one time in the basement. I did hear my name get called one time. And nobody else was around. Like, I thought that maybe somebody was outside playing and I maybe just heard it through the window. But I did hear um, hear somebody call my name. So, but it sounded sort of faint and far away. But so, like, I couldn't, I, you know, I didn't really think anything of it at the time. But um, eventually, I had my own bedroom in the, uh, you know, on the second floor, and it was kind of um, at the end of a sort of another long hallway. But I just remember, and this would be a regular occurrence. I'd be trying to sleep, but. I would keep seeing, and this would be sort of, if you were to tell, you know, your parents this, they would basically say it was your imagination, but this would be like a constant thing. Cause I would just, I would see things a lot in my mind's eye. It wouldn't be so much with, you know, my actual eyes. It would be, you know, I would see it, uh, an image persistently in my head. And I remember Third eye. multiple nights, multiple nights, this would happen. I would be sitting there with all the lights on my, in my room because I'm too terrified to sleep in the dark at this point. And I would see a figure that looked a lot like Michael Myers from Halloween, and he would no. just stand over my bed staring at me, and it was lovely. I, I, oh, that I sounds so, horrible. Yeah, so it was, <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys this. I think that Elizabeth and I know this, and Christy, too, because of what we do, the research we do. All these crazy horror characters that they make movies about, are based on real things. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are, absolutely. Yeah. stuff. So you very well could have absolutely, and a lot of times it brings those entities to all he does. <laughs> well, I mean, still it's, funny. <laughs> it's, it's so scary. It's funny, though, well, because yeah. um, I know that one of the things that, you know, just to sort of by my disposition, I mean, I'm an artist, so I mean, I, I function visually. My imagination has been wild since I was a little kid. But I know that that's not necessarily because that's not that if I see something in my head, that it means that it's not real. Like, oh, it's just your imagination. Actually, you're you tend to be picking up stuff mm -hmm. from the other realm that, you know, you're not creating it. It's finding you and you're perceiving it. Right. So, it's, your, it's this. It's your third, this, this pressure mm -hmm. point right here is your third yeah. eye. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what they're trying to crystallize over is and, this. And I mean. Now, um, now yep. I kind of, I've learned to sort of use that as a way of sort of gauging spiritual experiences. I know that that's kind of a relevant way of uh, understanding another aspect of anything I kind of experience. Um, and it comes into play, there's a later story, but um, the last really creepy thing that happened in my, um, <laughs> in this old house was um, me and Cody were in that bathroom and we had the lights off, and we were doing the stupid things that little kids do by doing the Bloody Mary thing in the mirror, right? Yeah. Um, I remember but, that. Oh, God. Nothing. We didn't see anything when we did Bloody Mary, so we did Bloody John. Bloody instead. John. So we said yep. Bloody John three times, and I remember this. I saw. I swear I saw it a face. Like, 
it was like an ectoplasmic blue figure standing right yep. here. I caught a glimpse of him. And it, he looked like he was wearing like almost like a Victorian style British coat. No. <laughs> yep. Don't you and dude, we, pan we panicked. Like, oh, we freaked we out. panicked we out of that we bathroom. Out of that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, we all each have the same room. memory. So you, now you can panic even more because yeah. when you do that, shit by yes. yourself, you're like, maybe I no. saw when you have someone there with you that's like, holy right. crap. No, dude. I think I think I climbed over Brett trying to get out of that bathroom that day. <laughs> I think we had at least one other person with us too. I don't. I think maybe it was your little brother. It might have been Kara. Yeah, I don't remember to be honest. I think it might have been Kara because Caden would have been. I don't even know if Caden existed yet, <laughs> or if he did, he was like a baby. That's my little brother. By the way. So how, how far apart are you guys in age as cousins? A few months. Oh, a few months, yeah. Yeah, so y'all yeah. basically grew up as siblings. Yep, so, basically yeah, brothers, yeah. yeah. But um, I do remember, uh, Cody can confirm this too, my uh, sister was a teenager, my older sister was a teenager at the time, and she would teach us um, the sort of high school witch stuff that you would probably learn in something like watching The Craft. Yeah, it's like, say that's uh, like, like a black, black cat scratch. scratch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, how old are you guys? Um, uh, I'll be 27 uh, really? next month. And so your sister, so, so you always say, we're both 38. So your sister was in high school. We're probably closer to your sister's age. I was yeah, about to say the craft. My sister's yeah. in her 30s. Do uh, I? Yeah. My yeah, sister's so, in her 30s. Yeah, so, the craft was big when we were kids. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we would do things like, you know, there's like the light as a feather, stiff as a board stuff. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the black cat scratch yeah. is really spooky to me. Because mm -hmm. there for a while, I would see phantom black cats, though. I would. I would see, like, visually, not, not up here. Like, I, I had seen multiple times, I would see a black cat walking around that was not one of our cats, because we do have cats. It was not one of ours. And I would <laughs> see it where I was just out and about doing stuff. So it really creeped me out as a little kid. But, um... Uh, that's pretty much it for most of the stuff that happened in that particular house. I will say, though, um, when I'm kind of, and this is something that's just happened to me, I guess it's, it kind of relates to that sort of Michael Myers looking figure, but um, I tend to kind of have the sort of twilight sleep a lot where I'll like wake up and see something you know i'll see some kind of astral being it could be anything it could be something yes. horrifying it could be something really weird but it tends to happen regularly enough that um and my uh my fiance can attest to this there have been plenty of times where we've both been asleep and i wake up see something and then all of a sudden all the blankets on the bed have just been flung across the room at something and i'm going after nothing <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So I was gonna ask that. I'm glad you, you should tell him about the weird little statues in your house. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Bryce, oh, yeah. but he just out. moved into this new place, <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> he was like, he that. was like, I think the house might be haunted, and <laughs> he takes me back into this little room. Uh, after he right after he moves in, or maybe it was when you were moving it in. Was maybe it's right after. Move. Yes. Okay. And this wasn't that long ago. But we went into the back room and I'm, I'm talking like there was at least like a 20 degree difference in that room. And I'm like, this is really creepy because I'm feeling the temperature difference. And I looked to my, I think it was either, it was when they were in the closet. I opened up the yeah. closet and there's, there's these tiny little like, uh, like African statues. And dude, I was like, no. I was like, you need to get rid of those. <laughs> you need to burn those. Like like, I like know, but I didn't know that there. at the time. But dude, they, the, the aesthetic was so creepy with the temperature difference. Let me tell you. <laughs> I would just, it's like, it's like you're, you're trying to recreate the Sally house here. I would just lock that <laughs> right? door and be like, we're not coming back in. You can have this room. We'll so, put the rest of the house. So I, can, I can go into some of the experiences I have had in this house that I'm in right now. As we um, see a, a picture fly across the room or something. Um, right. If you well, see my camera shake, my dog's just smacking the tripod. So, you know. <laughs> um, it, honestly, in this house, it hasn't really been... I don't think... I, I do know that there is at least one entity in this house. Um... 
and it does he does seem to occupy that room um it's his room? I mean, that yeah that particular room he seems to sort of occupy it um he doesn't i don't think there's anything like necessarily negative about him um it, it just seems sort of like sad energy really yeah. like because mm. i think like something between, happened to him between me and my fiance we both believe that that man was like hung on that property like that he was killed and that his spirit is sort of stuck there because she's had her own experiences like he seemed to be more comfortable wanting to talk to her than me because i think maybe the people who killed him were probably men and so maybe he saw her as being a bit more approachable because she she talked about it because she actually saw like she's seen things when it comes to that uh she said that um there was one point when she um, she was actually at work, like, and we had worked down the street from our house, and she she saw for a brief moment she saw what looked like a skinless body just hanging from the ceiling, and then she also saw like she had kind of looked over and she saw what looked like a black figure, and he like. He like freaked out and jumped back as if he was shocked that he saw her and she audibly heard his feet like the like shoes like she audibly heard shoes like hit the ground when he jumped and um so i remember getting this text <laughs> but um i i'm really good about doing banishing and cleansing and stuff like that so you can bet i immediately cleansed this house as much as i could but yeah. um but with um she kind of, um, well, you know, she tried to sort of meditate in that room a little bit and she got a few sort of, um, images. She said that it looks like this guy sort of appeared before her and she said that his face, you know, looked sort of basic. He had like blue eyes and red hair and his features kind of looked like one side was lower than the other. So it seemed pretty accurate to me, but she said that she got the feeling that, um, he was kind of not wanting to show her what he actually looked like because she he didn't want to like freak her out too much because she was basically saying that it seemed like you know he didn't have any skin like any time that you know that was just like basically the flesh um Ugh. but uh she had seen that like that's basically largely what i've like imagery wise when it comes to that entity that's what we've seen uh as for other stuff it's just a few little uh creepy things here and there. I think there was a, um, there was like a fear feeder. There was some kind of like a smaller, more, uh, less intelligent astral deity that really likes to feed off of like anxiety and fear. But, uh, I, I did the best I could to get that out of there. There is a seller though, that I'm just yep. kind of leaving. You guys in your basements and cellars. <laughs> like, there Dude, is I'm cellar. telling you, I, I have a bunker. Like I call it my bunker. It's a tornado shelter. Which I don't think Midwest it's haunted. Too. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't think it's haunted or anything. But he has like a spooky, yeah. like, dirt yeah. cellar where yeah. his. Uh, I think it's where your central air's at, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Down I in have there. To go down there to replace the filter every once in a while. He but, tried uh, to get me to go down there the other day, and I was like, Nah, bro, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> with that, uh, with that cellar, um, I did remember going down there right around the time we first moved in. But I didn't really feel anything like super spooky. It um, I kind of was getting mental images of it because the dirt down there is so old. I kept getting mental images of people sort of walking around and having like uh, carts, you know, like horse horse carts and everything, which would be accurate because the town that I'm in is extremely old, and that would have and this is the oldest part of that town. Yeah, I mean, this house is like about a hundred. It's about a hundred years old. And so, for those yep. from Europe watching, that's old for us here in America. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty old. <laughs> um, for us newbies. I know but, Elizabeth might have to jump off here in a second. So I just wanted to, yeah. she's yeah, got a I, uh, little baby boy that she's got. Levi's usually the show. All right. I, I'm sorry. I can't stay to hear yours. <laughs> but yeah, well, so I'll send you the video. Well, You'll be okay. able to Thank see Thank you for it, joining so. us. Yeah. <laughs> It's been great talking to you. Bye. Sure. Bye, Elizabeth. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say, as far as that basement goes, the spookiest thing I have experienced was just having to clear out the countless spider egg sacs and spiders just to uh, change my air filter. <laughs>
Because they were, oh, I, was God. Laughing, I probably had to spray and clear at least a hundred different spider ace, egg sacs. Like, oh God! It, and it was just on the steps. I was just yeah. trying to clear a straight path from the top of the stairs to the air filter. But, but there was down. But there was no beef jerky man waiting for you in the mall. No, no beef jerky man in the basement. I promise. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I mean, y'all are for those. I laugh about the Midwest because Chrissy's in Pennsylvania. I'm in Georgia. We, I have, we, we don't have a basement here, but her basement's obviously on the East Coast as well. But the Midwest, for those watching from New York, you think of like. Um, uh, Wizard of Oz, <laughs> the cellar. Oh, no. Y'all are, no. y'all are no. making that stereotype. You ever? <laughs> <laughs> if you ever, uh, I mean, you I live in Tornado time. Alley, but I've never seen a tornado, and I've lived here my whole life. So we have tornadoes I mean, all the time down here. Y'all I've gonna, never seen one. We get them all ever. the time. Christy, do you get them in Pennsylvania? <laughs> Very rarely. Um, we had one in Salisbury, like maybe ten minutes away, but that was back in like '97. Oh, um, we get but, we have, like tornado uh, season down here in the south. So uh, yeah. yeah um, I would say pro tip for any audience members. If you ever meet someone from Kansas, please, for the love of God, do not tell them you're not in Kansas anymore. Please do not. Yeah, do dude, not please. No, we we've we've heard it so many times. times. <laughs> like it will literally make us cringe beyond belief. <laughs> it's like, no, dude, we totally just live in cornfields out here and there's no like yeah, modern well, technology I'm, or anything. I'm I Flintstone it to work morning. every day. <laughs> 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 I have Amish. I, uh, yeah, you have the Amish. In the, in, I have yeah. Amish. We like we have the Amish too, actually. Yeah. Not too far Amish. from us. <laughs> oh, drive you nuts, dude. <laughs> well, they don't really like, bother us, but do they have some bomb meats? Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, like especially when what I'm saying is like when they're in town and you're like sitting there and it's like, oh my god, you, you can just sit have behind the buggy. Oh, <laughs> and the and the horse and buggy. Yes. <laughs> You're just like, oh, yes, <laughs> drive on the sidewalk. Like, you're cruising. Like, even though it's like 25 or 35 here in town, you're mm -hmm. cruising all of a sudden. It's like, damn. He's buddy. like, dude, I've got two horsepower max right now. This bad boy is not going any faster. <laughs> there has actually been accidents, like, right up here in town where a, a vehicle and a horse and buggy. Um, oh, yeah. no. Where the horse oh, was like no. bad. They hit the horse and stuff. Yeah, it was so no. <laughs> bad. That sounds awful. We don't have the Amish down here in Georgia, but people make does, fun of us because we are in Georgia. So. This guy, does Geico insure horse and buggy though? Like, can you get liability <laughs> only question, for actually. horse and buggy? Do the Amish get insurance on their buggies? That's a really good question. I mean, do they have? Do they even have tags? Like these? These Listen, are the real questions we need to ask. Amish do they pay taxes. Amish people isn't as innocent that you think they are. When no, I, I do know that they have like a. Well, I know when they're like coming into adulthood, they go and they have like a week of sending the bus or whatever. Yeah, oh, to like get it out of their system, like, <laughs> allegedly. Like, they're bad. Where I used to live was an apartment, and this Amish guy came, and he was messing around with my upstairs woman. And oh. this is me, and you know, he'd come down, and he would talk, and then she would come down, and I knew what they was doing. And so I said, oh. can I ask you a question? He's like, yeah. I was like, does your women and stuff give you, like, and all that stuff, too? And he's like, yeah, we do everything that you guys do. And I'm like, we do oh. it all. <laughs> I don't know if they do that kind of stuff, you know. So, like, I wanted to know. That's funny. It's like, is it is it through a she, or do you keep the hat on, or like in the horse and buggy, or what's good? <laughs> I don't know. He offered to take us for a ride. I always wanted to go for a ride, and I was like, no, I'll pass this one up this time because I know what you want. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. That's funny. That's that great. is so funny. You, YouTube's over here like demonetized, bro. Immediately. <laughs> 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 in guys. the corner. I'm gonna She's go, just like, what did you I'm say? Gonna and, 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 and I'm going to go through this before we air it and take all the words. All right, guys, we have like 20 minutes left. Okay, Christy, go. Tell us your story. Um, <laughs> I basically grew up in a haunted house, you know, from. I lived there from birth to 18 until we moved. I mean, we called him George. Uh, we didn't, 
he didn't seem grumpled. We heard like the knocking, the doors closing, going up the steps. Um, now the basement was another words at ours. There was a room down there. It was like a shelter room and it was right down at the end of the steps. And Bryce, I did the same thing. Every time that room was always eerie. It was like the room we'd go to if there was a tornado threat or whatever. It was creepy as shit down there. We'd get up and right there, we'd run up and, but he never, we call him he, we call him George. My parents knew about it. I mean, my friends, we all knew about the, you know, if you hear anything, it's just George. Yeah. Now there was one incident where my brother went and he put up those, uh, uh, you know, calendars of girls in swimsuits and stuff. He put them up through yeah. his bedroom. The next morning, all of them was facing down on the floor. Like, I don't know who they didn't want. Well, he didn't want George wasn't having that. <laughs> So maybe, <laughs> maybe it was a Georgette instead of a Georgette. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it was a Georgette. <laughs> yeah, a Georgette. I mean, I would love to go back to that house and to see if there's anything still there that I'm older now because it's been I 18. So it's been like, and I'm going to 20 years. So it's been 20 years since I've been back there. I'd love to go check it out. Your parents Just aren't there see. anymore? Is it a new family yeah. there now? Um, yeah, there's the new family. Both of my parents have passed. Uh, my dad passed like in 02 when my daughter was born. Then my mom passed in 09. So I was like in my early, my 20s when I lost both of my parents. That's rough. Um, that is, is super rough. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I grew up like Elizabeth with the fighting. The You know, but mm -hmm. my mom and dad stay together because... You know, there's times I can remember that we was packed in the car ready to leave. And I can remember my dad standing there in the garage and we was just falling because we was little. And my mom ended up staying, but she made the, she made the thing with my dad. She's like, once Christy, because I was the youngest and once Christy graduated, she was out. She's like, I don't want no more. And they basically went their way. I went with my mom because I was mama's girl and stuff. But growing up there, like that, it was creepy, like. The, the basement was creepy. The attic was creepy. There was two rooms that we didn't really, it was like closets, walked in closets, like you could like in the living room and stuff. Just things like that. But nothing, I don't remember ever being touched or mm. anything like that. Now, when I was about 25, 26, I was working um, with a girl. She had behavior problems. She was um, 23 at the time. So she was a couple years younger than me. And I was working 11 to seven night shift and she was sleeping and, um, she was really bad where she had to have everything bolted down, like where she said was bolted to, because she would actually pick this stuff up and she would like try to eat it. She ate screws and stuff before, like, she oh, ate wow. pens. I mean, oh, like, she wow. was bad. yeah. So Dude. in the kitchen, like all she had was a, um, a couch, a wooden couch. It was bolted to the floor. There was no pillows on it. Um, she had like a thing over here where she was set to have her meals. It was everything was bolted down. The doors was locked to the kitchen. And then there was like a little, like an island where you can set stuff on and then go around and take it. Well, I remember mm -hmm. one night I was in there and I crawled up there to watch TV. And because her room was right beside the TV where it was so I could keep an eye. And I'm just laying there. I shit you not. I felt a hand go straight through my hair like that. Off that thing, I went and into the office and the other person was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I don't know. I was like, someone just stuck their hand, ran their hand through my hair. And I was like, uh-uh, I ain't going out there anymore. I about to shit myself. <laughs> I so would I, imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So I didn't know, you know, with her being the way the she was. was like, mm, is that Pantene? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it literally, you know how, like, when you just go and you take your hair, that's all it was. That's creepy, though. That's all it was. That that is super I'm creepy. I'm still getting the chills to think about it, because I'm telling you, that that was, like... So, like, then, listen, I grew up with the ghost that tore down nudie pictures, and that was even more creepy. <laughs> so that was worse. Dude. Yeah, I'm like, this one touched me. I'm like... So then, here about five, four or five years ago, I worked, um, I work with older people, disabled people, mentally ill people. I just have a natural for that. Well, anyways, I was working in this home where it had three ladies in it. Um, 
one of them was bedridden the other one was wheelchair bound and then the other one was she was just like out there she was funny though but anyways they would come in they would like the people that worked there would tell us stories about like you know the basement being really off and stuff and i could remember and being like yeah yeah well after i started working there I noticed that I had that feeling down in the basement because that's where the laundry, you go down and then the laundry through the store and the laundry stuff. Oh, Man, it basement. scared me. Well, if you go around to back behind the steps, there was our room where we had to take the ladies in case anything happened. That's where we had to get them down to. Well, this one day, my fiance decides to go down and prank my best friend, Rachel, that was working with me. He was standing in the doorway under the steps. And he oh. went to go grab her, like, to just prank her. And all of a sudden, you heard him go, ow! I go around, I'm like, what happened? I left up his shirt on his back, and there was three scratches like that. Oh! No. No. He, he no. freaked out. He, we, me and Rachel was like, Whoa. up the stairs we went. God. So, sorry, I just want to put out there, sorry to the night shift people that we didn't do the clothes. I was too freaked out to go down and do the clothes. <laughs> sorry, guys. <but> no. <laughs> yeah. So it, your boyfriend was going to prank your friend, but he yeah, ended up being Yes. Targeted. That yes. was like, we'll see who does the pranking around here. <laughs> we like literally up there and we looked at each other. Me and Rachel was like, oh my God. Oh my God. You know, because Dude, that was was super times, sketch. <laughs> there was times Margie, she was nonverbal. The lady, she was in a wheelchair, but she was nonverbal, but she'd make sounds. She'd sit there and ah, look up in the in the thing, just talking away, giggling, laughing. And I'm like, oh, Dude. that must be Patty. Oh, that must be Patty. Because she had passed. And I was like, mmm, because she would always do that to Patty. It just mm. I don't know about oh, that, yeah. dude. Dude, that's mm -mm. see when my when my grandpa was passing away, he was seeing what well my mom thought he was seeing like angels and he was telling them to go away because he wasn't ready to go yet. But he would point and because he had had a stroke, he wasn't super verbal at that time either. But it man, I tell you what, when that veil is relatively thin between life and death. People are definitely seeing some things that we can't see. At least I think they are. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's <laughs> when, when my mom passed away, she was on a lot of medicine. She had a lot of health problems and stuff, and they went to do a um a cath on her to see her. Uh, I think yeah, a cath to see how her heart was doing. And um, at the time, she only had ten percent working, and it was. <sighs> It, it was it was a hard time because they took that doctor went and took my mom off of all her meds that she had been on for years and it really screwed her up and it turned her into a person that i never seen because i can remember when she was over in the hospital i walked in and she looked at me i swear to god it was like a demon like she looked at me and she said what the f did i ever do to you for you to put me here you're not my kid. And I'm sitting there just bawling and bawling. And my two aunts are there. And I literally just freaked out. I went out. My aunt came out. And she's like, Chrissy, she's like, it's okay. I'm like, no, that's not my mom. That's not my mom. Well, she ended up going to the fourth floor. She would call me. And she, what did I ever do to you? Hmm? What did I ever do to you? I felt like complete like shit because I'm like, I really think my mom's possessed. At the end when they Dude, took I, off everything. I can just, relate. My mom actually, um, she's almost died between high school, so I was about 16 to the age I am now. She's almost died three times. Um, this latest time, my aunt actually found her, and if she hadn't have found her within a couple hours, she would have been dead. Because her doctor at the time actually prescribed her meds that went toxic in her system. And it caused her to essentially go into like a, a toxic coma. Um, is the best way I can describe it. But she she was in the hospital. And she was in an actual coma for I think it was about three weeks. And she finally woke up. And I remember we got the call that she woke up. And me and my brother and sister all went out to see her. And she was so incoherent and just so angry. She was like, "You need to get me out of here." And it's like, mom, you just had, you know, like 
you were just in a coma. Like I can't just take you out of the hospital, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But I I can relate that you feel it's a, it's a real big catch 22 because you're really excited that they're still with you sort of a thing. But when they're essentially treating you like dirt over the situation, you're, you're very like, well, you know, this isn't my fault. Kind of Mm -hmm. like I have you in a place so you can get the treatment you need. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a rough. Now I do have a very good uh, story to tell you quick about the, about a good thing that happened to me. Well, Oh, we can definitely use some uh, positive vibes. (laughs) It's kind of sad, but it turns into good. Uh, Back in 2018, my niece, my oldest niece, Vanessa, she just, her birthday was December 11th. She just turned 21. The day after, she was going to school, and she wrapped and died. That two days after that, her son was going to be one year old. She he was turning one. So I have a very hard time with it because I'm sorry. I don't mean to cry. No, it's okay. Because oh, she's, she was my first niece. I was 15 when she was born. And I can remember carrying her picture around and just being so proud to be in it for the first time. And it was about last year. We, uh, I was sitting out there. I went out to the kitchen and I was cleaning out my cup and stuff and it had a straw to it. And I remember I set it right down on the end of the sink and I went and I turned around to do something. Well, when I went back to it, my straw was gone. Well, I started like, okay, who took my damn straw? I'm like, you know, yelling at my fiance, my kids and stuff. I'm like, who took it? I'm like, I know you guys are playing a prank. And they're like, no, Christy, we're not. I'm like, bullshit. I'm like, sorry, my French. I'm like, Mm-mm, you're okay. doing it. And I was like, forget it. I just went back here to my little room and stuff and just started doing something. Well, I went back out. It was like maybe half an hour, hour later. There's my straw set in the exact same place where I set it and it wasn't there. I picked it up and I was like, okay, which one of you a-holes had this and you just put this back? And they're looking at me like, Christy, it wasn't us. I got this feeling that come over me I started crying. I started laughing. Goosebumps all over me. And I was like, I kept on saying, she got me. She got me. And I can't get her back, that little butthead. She got me. I'm telling you, it was, I get goosebumps now. It was my niece. She was giving me a wink. You know, I had a dream. I had a dream of her where she, it was weird. Because all I remember is that we was standing in a kitchen around an island and it was me and her, but there was other people around and I couldn't, I couldn't make out their faces, but there, I knew there was other people around. We go out to this hallway and it felt like she picked me up, but she wasn't holding me, but it felt like she was cradling me. And all of a sudden we just start down this big long ass hallway and I'm sitting there laughing, even though she's not holding me. I'm like basically floating and I don't know how the hell I'm doing it. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what that was about. I never, I I woke up feeling like, what is that about? Like, I think they communicate (laughs) our dreams. And like, I, I I think they want us to remember that the physical body isn't it. We Mm. still live beyond the body breaks down. Well, her little interesting. You bring up, communication through dreams um i used to have a what i felt like were a lot of communications through dreams Um, my grandma actually the same one who passed away in the house that i was describing earlier um the last dream i had of her actually was right when i was learning how to drive and i was about to go take my driving exam and she actually never learned how to drive like she tried but she was scared of it Mm-hmm. And uh, she never ended up getting her driver's license <laughs> her whole life. So in my dream, I was, pr- for some reason, I was practicing driving. And my grandma actually was in the passenger seat. And she was like, just floor it. I was like, what? And I, she was like, just floor it. So I floored it. And all of a sudden, we like we were driving. And then we just started going up. And like it was just a happy, laughing mm-hmm. type of like dream. And I woke up. And I just remember I was, I was crying a little bit. But I went and I aced that test and I got my driver's license that day. 
So maybe she was looking out for me. She was like, you'll be all right. You know, just drive, just drive but, fast with me. And we'll, we'll go through all the cat yeah, well, but I was just fast. like, dude, she didn't, I, I think about it now to this day. And I'm like, Hey, it was the last dream I had about her and B like, she never drove. But the fact that she was like in my dream in the car being like, just floor it. <laughs> and I'm like, anyone who knows me knows I'm like a super cautious driver. I'm like a, I'm like a dad driver. You know, Your like I'm not out here. Influence yeah, my gra- I'm like, what the hell, grandma? <laughs> That's funny. That's, you know, that was typical of that generation. A lot of women didn't didn't do that back in that generation. I mean, I know I have. I mean, I know Christy and I are about ten years older than you guys, but I know I have friends mm-hmm. whose grandmothers still don't even who do drive that don't even know how to pump gas because they had attendants that did that. They didn't know how that was. Are there yep. people who do it for them? You know, back in the and, day, yep. yeah. Back in the day, I've met so many of my friends' parents who like. I have a few friends whose whose dads have since passed away, and their moms. Mm-hmm. Even my parents' generation don't even know if they own their house. Like, don't mm-hmm. even know. Like, they're the the kids have had my kids from high friends from high school had to go home and like help their moms, like teach them like how sort to, through the paperwork and stuff. Yeah, because they didn't. Because yeah, uh, for women and and then the the Midwest, the South. Very common, very cultural similarities. Where very like standard yeah. traditional nuclear right. family. Yeah, and so they didn't they didn't know how. So that that doesn't surprise me that she maybe never had her yeah. life. That's very typical of, of that generation. Like, yeah, at- she she grew up through the Great Depression, and I don't think it was so much a generational thing for her. I just think it was she really just didn't like to try. <laughs> she was like, I'll just like, have I'll just have my grandson for it for me. She was you know she was like, my husband will drive me, my parents will drive me. It's <laughs> totally kids, chill. Right? She she was long gone before I even got into a vehicle to drive it. She's with you now. She she scary. left us in. Uh, uh, 2005 when I was 10. Oh, so yeah. I definitely wasn't in a car at that time. Yeah, yet. for sure. <laughs> but listen, guys, I got to run. My, my little boy is right here with my little boy. My dog is right here with me. I oh, yeah. have to run. So um, I'm so excited to put this out. Thank you guys so much for sharing your sure. stories. Yeah, thank you for having us. Let's do this sure. again. Yeah. I'm serious. Let's do this again. Let's get the ants. Let's get the mom. Like, whoever wants to come <laughs> on. <laughs> That would be fun. Maybe I get That'd be my fun. mom to come We on should also me. talk about the supernatural ties to horror movies because I have a couple yes. of things I was going to bring okay. up. You don't have time Ooh, for it. Maybe for next sure. time. Let's schedule some things. That'd be awesome. I, 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 I've had my... Yeah, let's schedule something. Shoot me a text and let's schedule something and we'll talk about all let's that. Let's do that's, it. That's, part. That's, that's mixing the... Um, French storytelling with the truther community as well because yes. they all mixes. So awesome right. guys. Well I'm gonna let you guys have a wonderful Saturday evening. This is gonna be yes, you you do the same. Saturday. So <laughs> <laughs> all right guys have a good one. See you Bye. later. Bye. Bye. See you.